What's up everyone, Patrick here, and in this video what I'm going to do is go over some of the differences between managerial accounting and financial accounting. I want to give a heads up that before we get into the video, various sources, various textbooks, various professors may express these differences in their own unique way. So some of the differences that I'm going to list out, your professor or your textbook may not have them and vice versa. Some of the differences that your professor mentions may not be here or they might be expressed in a different way using different terms. So I'm going to list out pretty general differences, pretty universal differences that you'll probably see across all sources, but make sure that you're going over both sources. So my video plus the uh, stuff that you are getting in your specific class. So the first difference I want to go over is the type of users that use both types of accounting. And with managerial accounting, it's used mostly internally within a company and financial accounting, external users are using it more. So different types of internal users may use it within a company, but the most common type is basically the managers within a company. And it's actually where the word managerial accounting comes from, right? Manager is in the word managerial. So manager, CEO, basically any internal user can be using managerial accounting. External users don't usually have access to the managerial accounting. And then financial accounting, it's more so external users. So the three common types are lenders, or creditors, so for example, if you have a company and you wanna borrow money to help grow your company, you're gonna to go to a bank. The bank is gonna to wanna to see your records, gonna to wanna see your financial accounting, your balance sheet, your income statement, statement of cash flows, et cetera, et cetera. Another common type of external user is the government or any regulating body, right? All public companies, they have to issue reports, 10K reports, and financial accounting, all of the statements are within those reports. And another common type of external user for financial accounting is investors. So anyone who's thinking of buying the company or buying the stock of the company. So for example, Warren Buffett, one of the best investors of all time. If you watch his interviews, a lot of times the interviewer is asking him how he spends his days. And he always says he's always reading all day. That's how he spends most of his day. And what he's reading is these 10K reports, these annual reports of different companies that he's thinking about investing in. And he's looking at the financial accounting, all of the financial statements. Actually, a pretty cool article, one of my favorite articles of all time, describes this. I'll leave a link below if you want to check it out about how he spends his day and how basically his whole day is spent reading these uh, reports, him and his partner, Charlie Munger. It's a pretty sick article, so check that out. Another difference between the two is that managerial accounting, it's not mandatory or regulated. So it's all up to the company, whether they wanna do managerial accounting, how they wanna do it, right? There's no regulation, there's no certain way to do it. So it's all up to the company. However, financial accounting, it is mandatory and it is regulated kind of mentioned that with external users with the government, right? So all public companies on the NASDAQ, on the New York Stock Exchange, they all have to file their financial accounting to the SEC, Security Exchange Commission. And it's regulated by different accounting bodies. They have to follow general accounting principles, right? The financial statements. So that's another big difference between the two. Now the different types of reporting that both of them have, managerial accounting has segmented reporting and financial accounting has consolidated reporting. And financial accounting may have some segmented reporting too. You may see financial statements split up into like countries, into regions, et cetera, et cetera. But the main balance sheet, the main income statement, the main statement of cash flows in a company's 10K is gonna be consolidated. It's gonna be for the company as a whole versus managerial accounting. It really thrives off segmenting reports because you want to see more specifically what's happening within your company. So they may have reports on each division or each country or each city, each store. They may have reports on each manager. And if they want to get really granular, maybe on each employee, how much revenue a certain employee is bringing in versus how much resources they're taking up. Another difference is the type of information that both use. So managerial accounting, it's more so concerned with relevant information 
while financial accounting, it's more so concerned with precise information. There may be different terms that describe these in your textbook. So you may see a term come up like timeliness, right? So timely information, same thing as relevant information or maybe even flexible information. While precise information, you may see terms like um, verifiable information or reliable, reliability. You may see that term come up when describing financial accounting, right? So different types of information. Now you can get precise information for managerial accounting. The problem is, is that the more you start segmenting, the more expensive precise information costs, the more expensive it is to implement a system to track everything. So for example, if you have segmented reporting on each manager and you want really precise information like how much printer paper they're using, right? It's going to cost you a good amount of money to implement a system to monitor how much printer paper a manager is using. And is that really going to help you in figuring out should you add a product line to this city or to this store or to this region? Not really. Right? So you wouldn't really concern yourself with that type of information. You want relevant information. So it doesn't have to be too precise. It has to be relevant to your decision making. Versus financial accounting, it has to be precise because, again, external users are going to be using it. And if it's not precise, then there could be lawsuits filed. Right? So there's a lot of types of cases where companies are cooking their books for example, right? They're not giving precise information. Lawsuits come up. And because the reporting is consolidated, the precise information doesn't cost as much to get. Because if we go back to that printing paper example, if you are looking at the printer paper that a manager is using, that is going to take a lot of resources to monitor. Versus if you're looking at the printer paper that a company as a whole is using, it's not going to be as tough to monitor that or tough to get that number, right? It's still going to be precise, but it's going to be for the company as a whole. So there's always these trade-offs between precision and costs of a system to implement that, especially with segmented reporting. And the last thing I'll mention about the two is that managerial accounting more so concerned about the future, about future decisions. So as I mentioned before, maybe should we add a product line to this company, to this city, to this store, to this region? Budgeting as well, that's a future decision. You're going to get a lot of budgeting questions in this course. How do we budget certain costs, certain expenses? And then financial accounting, it's based on historical data. So the balance sheet, the income statement, statement of cash flows, always on always based on historical data. Now, financial accounting can be used for future decisions. So lenders, right, should we lend money to this company? It's going to be based on the historical data. Or um, investors, should we invest in this company? But all the data they're going to be looking at for financial accounting is going to be historical. So a couple of differences here. As I mentioned before, make sure you go over the differences in your textbook in your specific textbook or the differences that your prof went over because they may express them differently and there may be a couple that I even miss that they want you to know for your test. So make sure you go over those and that's a wrap for this video.